Remember that this is a very basic example. Entity A acquired 40% in Entity B on 1 January 2020 at a cost of 100,000. Assume that this is an associate in terms of I is 28. Entity A disposed of 20% of the shares in Entity B for 60,000 on 1 July 2021, deemed to be the fair value on this date. Entity B, which is our associate, recognized a profit of 10,000 for the year ended 31 December 2020. Entity B recognized a profit for the six month period till 30 June 2021 of 10,000. Accounting policies. Entity A accounts for investments and associates at cost in its separate financial statements in terms of RS27 paragraph 10A. Entity A classifies this investment as a financial asset in terms of RS9 in its separate financial statements and irrecoverably elected to present subsequent changes in the fair value of the investment in other comprehensive income in a mark-to-market -market reserve. If tax is applicable, remember based on CGT rate, capital gains, year in 31 December and we ignore all taxes. Required. Perform the journal entries in both records, only relating to the information provided in the records of Entity A and then in the records of our group. Now, this is a change in control. Therefore, our first step will be to identify the type of change. And the next step, I prefer to include my timeline to ensure that I understand the scenario. Right. Okay, so let's refer to our calculations. Step number one, identify the change. We now know that this is an associate. They sell 20% and this will be a normal RFRS 9 investment. Right? Step one. Step two, we're going to look at our timeline. Okay, so guys, at the top of our timeline, we need to look at our separate records of our investor. At the bottom, we look at our group records. Very important. Remember. Now focus and think with me, please. In the separate records at the top, we now know that this is an associate for this period on our timeline. Separate records at the top. This is an RFRS 9 investment from 1 July 2021. Okay, so when we look at the separate records, our associate, how do we recognize the associate? We debit the investment and we credit bank. Well, we assume bank because we don't have any other information. Now, they've indicated to us that the cost is 100000 Remember, this is in terms of accounting policy and the separate records. Right. Now, what happens? Imagine that you are standing on 1 July 2021. On this date, they sell the 20%. They've indicated to us that they sell this for 60000 Now, let's just think about our normal transaction here, guys. We will have to debit bank because they receive the 60000 What do we credit? We credit the investment with how much? Originally, they've purchased this for 100000 They sold 20%, therefore, times 20 over 40, and this will be 50000 Therefore, our investment will decrease with 50000 and we will credit a profit on the sales transaction of 10000 Right, now, still in the separate records, what do we do now? If we refer to IS28 paragraph 22, this is an associate that changed into an RFRS 9 investment. Look at this. Measure your retained interest at fair value. Remember now, guys, we need to measure the retained interest at fair value. Now, what is the retained interest? 20%. The entity still has 20% in entity B. Therefore, we need to remeasure that 20%. Now, when we look at this, our fair value, look at the right side, guys, 
of the 20% is this 60,000. How do we know this? Because they've indicated to us the 20,000, sorry, the 20% that we've sold is at 60,000. And they've also indicated to us when we look at this, that this is at fair value on this day. Therefore, we can assume the remaining 20% is also fair value. And we know the cost of that 20% is 50,000. Therefore, we are able to identify that there is a 10,000 fair value adjustment. Therefore, we will have to include in the separate records, debit the investment with a 10,000. And look at this, guys, credit our fair value adjustment in our profit and loss with a 10,000. Do you see, this is not yet the mark to market reserve. Because the standard indicates to us on this date, we now assume that the 60,000 is our fair value as per RFRS 9. Okay, guys, let me just write this down. The standard indicates to us that we now assume that the 60,000 will be our fair value in terms of RFRS 9. Now I want you to focus on the group section only at the bottom of our timeline. If we now need to apply, remember, we need to apply IS28 equity method accounting. Now, if we need to apply our equity method accounting, at acquisition date, journal entry, do we include anything for group purposes? No, why not? Because this is already at cost through the separate entities records. Because in the separate entity, we have debited the investment in associate at cost. Now, for the since period relating to our retained earnings, we will have to allocate a portion to our NCI, only 40%. And this will be 4,000. Now, what will our journal entry be? We will have to debit the investment in the associate with the 4,000. And we credit our retained earnings statement of changes in equity with the 4,000. Guys, if you're not familiar with these journals and understand them, please refer back to our RS28 lectures. Right. Now, for the current year, profit or loss, they've indicated to us 10,000. Therefore, we will have to allocate 4,000 to our investor. We debit the investment in our associate with the 4,000. And we credit our profit relating to our associate in our profit and loss with 4000 Right, now, what happens on 1 July 2021, the date when they sell the 20%? If we refer to IS28, paragraph 22, on the right side of your screen again, number one, we had to measure the retained interest, which they, we've already done, guys. They've already done this, right? Number two, we need to calculate the profit or loss for our group. How do we do this? We obtain the fair value of the retained interest, step number one. Therefore, fair value of our retained interest, which is the 60000 plus plus the Proceeds, which is 60,000, the selling price. Minus, now look at this please, minus the carrying amount of the investment in associate. Therefore now first we need to determine what is this carrying amount. Now I want you to look at the left side of your screen for me please. So we've got our carrying amount of the investment. Remember, this is from a group perspective. If you think about your statement of financial position, remember you will have a line item, investment in associate. This will include the cost, which comes through from our associate, sorry guys, from the separate records at the top, plus our retained earnings journal, the 4,000. Remember this 4,000 here. Plus, I just want to move my screen a bit here, so you're able to see, plus the current year's profit, 4,000. Right, 
Therefore, we are able to identify that the carrying amount will be an amount of 108000, right? Therefore, we now need to take this out. This is a minus on the right side of your screen. This is the calculation of our group profit or loss. Therefore, minus the carrying amount of the investment. And this will be 108000. And we are able to identify that there will be a profit from a group point of view of 12,000 to recognize. Right guys, now just bear with me. Listen, okay, so we now have to recognize the group profit or loss in our group. Therefore, we will have to credit the group profit relating to the sale of 12,000. Okay, so the way that I normally look at this, what do they receive? They receive or they keep the 20% and they've received the 60,000. Therefore, this is still included in the records. And we now need to take out this investment in associate because this is no longer an associate. This is now an RFRS 9 investment. Therefore, they receive the 120,000, but we need to take out the 108, and this is now 12,000 profit. Therefore, we credit the profit. Okay, but what do we debit? We need to debit the profit recognized in the separate financial statements in the profit and loss. The journal entry we've recognized at the top. This one, guys, in the middle of your screen, we need to take this out. We now need to debit this from a group perspective and take this out and this is 10,000 and then the balancing figure we will debit to our investment in associate now I'm going to explain this to you just now that this does make sense 2,000 okay this is your balancing figure right okay now if we look at this from a group point of view a group perspective guys they have recognized in the separate records a fair value adjustment remember this journal entry orange guys they've recognized the fair value adjustment at the top but for group purposes guys look at this for group purposes we don't want this investment in our records anymore because we do not have access to this if you look at your timeline for group purposes, on your timeline, and I'm going to make use of orange, this section here, guys, this is not included in the group anymore because the group doesn't have the investment in associate. The group has nothing to do with Entity B anymore. Entity B is now a normal investment. Okay, therefore, we now need to take out that 10,000, the journal here at the top. How do we take this out? Guys, I am going to explain to you the principle relating to this just now. Let's just have a look at this. We need to take this out. Therefore, we will have to debit in our group records our day one gain or loss. And this is the 10,000. And we credit our investment with the 10,000. Okay, now... Okay, let me just highlight this so that you know exactly where this comes from. The 10,000 there and the 10,000 here at the top, this section here. Therefore, we reverse it, right? I'm going to summarize this just now for you as well. Okay, so when we look at this, what I want you to think about, and if you need to, stop the recording and think with me. If we look at the separate records of the investor at the end of this transaction, what will the balance be based on all of our journal entries at the top? We had our 100,000 at cost, journal entry number one. Remember, when you look at the top, this is our journal entry number one. Journal entry number two, we took out 50,000. We've credited the investment. Look at this. We've credited the investment, right? Therefore, journal one, debit, journal two, credit. Debit plus credit minus, right? Okay, journal number three will be to 
debit the investment with the 10,000 and credit fair value adjustment. Therefore, debit investment, we need to plus 10,000 again. Plus 10,000. This is our journal number three. Therefore, the balance in our separate records will be 60,000, which is the fair value on 1 July. Now, if we look at our group records, from a group point of view, what will be included? Okay, work with me here, guys. Think with me. Okay. From a group perspective, which journals have we included? I'm going to make use of purple for you to follow me. Now, journal number one, we've included the investment in associate with the 4,000, right? Therefore, we need to include journal number one, and this will be plus 4,000. Journal number two, I'm going to look at this plus 4,000 as well. Journal two will be the profit for the current year. We've debited the investment with the 4,000. Therefore, add the 4,000, right? Journal number three will be to recognize the group profit and take out the separate records profits. We've debited the investment with 2,000. Therefore, journal three, we plus the 2,000. And then, journal entry number four, we credit the investment with the 10,000. We take this out, 10,000. Therefore, do you see that we have a balance of zero? No amount guys why not because in the group this does no longer exist this is just a normal financial asset investment in the separate records of entity a okay i'm going to repeat myself here in the group this investment is not an associate it's a normal financial asset in the records of entity a right now let's summarize the steps for us we are now going to summarize the steps right okay so when we look at the separate records of the investor on 1 July 2021 we have to recognize the profit relating to the sale therefore a profit or loss relating to the sale of the transaction the second journal entry will be to measure the retained investment at fair value. Therefore, your retained investment at fair value. Right. Now, what happens in our group? In our group, step one will be to take out the separate entities, profit or loss, and include our group profit or loss and remember you will have a balancing figure to your investment step number two we need to reverse this journal entry from a group perspective why because at the end our balance from our group should be zero in the records okay now, guys, I just want to add something a little bit confusing now, or just another principle, not really confusing, just another principle that I want you to please remember. Now, if there were any amounts previously recognized in OCI, which can be your mark-to-market -mark reserve or your revaluation surpluses, you need to take this to your retained earnings. Okay. 